Now, I think it would be a good thing if we could uh, get that much of our brain power. Um, one of the things I think uh, comes along with that is your ability to absorb uh, different aspects of the natural world or knowledge in other words. I'm a um, professor of neurology uh, lecturing at the Sorbonne. Uh, I have been for a number of years doing uh, hypotheses about what would happen if you could get access to a larger portion of your brain, say 20% even. Right now, it's uh, fairly well accepted that we only use about 10% of the brain's capacity. Oh my God, I don't even remember. I think it's uh, 10 years ago. Uh, just this idea about talking about intelligence but uh, I was not intelligent enough at the time, so it takes me 10 years to, <laughs> to write just one draft. Uh, but I want to play with that. I, I met a couple of scientists and I was amazed by what they tells me. They, it was just about the cancer, about the cells, the fact that we have, you know, hundreds of billions of cells who communicate just together, you know, like, 1,000 signal per second per cell, you know, the web is nothing compared to that. You know, she's just a simple girl and she's going to be, became the most ultimate knowledge on the universe. <laughs> so I like to play with, you know, you look stupid, you're intelligent, what's the, you know, you can become one or the other. It, it was very interesting and very playful to play with that. So it starts with a, a lot of conversation with big scientists. Twelve of them were a Nobel Peace Prize. And they are all of them in the ICM, the Institute for the, the Research about the, the Brain in Paris. It's a very beautiful center. And I work with these guys to, to make them talk. So I was fascinated and I, I take all their information and some of them you can make a film with it. Some of them you can't. But I was just trying to find my food, you know. I'm obliged to have a professor in a film because I have to tell what's true. So everything he said is 90% is real fact. And that's where the balance became to be very interesting because you, you have her, which is purely uh, uh, entertainment. She's, it's a film. But the other half is true. And it's, you know, if you mix the two half, if you mix it fast enough, you still don't, you don't know what's true, what's not. And so I need this professor because he's the... He's the, the authority of the film and who makes it possible. And it's also very interesting to see how a professor will react to something that he always imagined, but he never seen. Morgan Freeman is just the ultimate professor for two reasons. The first, He's totally convinced about the theory because he's very aware of it. I, I, I didn't know before we met for the film, but he's really aware of it. He is uh, excited about it. So he was, it was a pleasure for him just to talk about it. And the second thing, he's such a good actor that everything he said, you believe it. <laughs> I'm fascinated by, by Chun Min Sik. He's, he's one of the greatest actors I, I met. Uh, he's a superstar in Asia, in Korea, Japan, and all this. 
I think it's probably a DiCaprio multiply by Tom Cruise. <laughs> He's, he's really huge over there, and he's adorable. He's the sweetest, so he's not a villain at all. She read the script, the way she talked the first time about the script, I was in joy because she really understand the purpose of the story and all this, and she was excited about the, for the real reason, which is the story. So. At this moment, for me, it was done. It was her for sure. I always have the desire for this film to start to another place, you know, and Asia was perfect. When, when you watch the film, you understand. Then you can have a villain who doesn't understand anything. You can, you know, for lots of reasons, it was good. So the choice after was there's a couple of town uh, Taipei was one of the three or four, you know, cities, and uh, but the funny thing is on the script, I always put Taipei because I have a souvenir. I, I went for the fifth element for in promotion, and I have a souvenir of the town 20 years ago, and I and I love the town, the feeling, the people, and I, I was staying in a hotel what, which I like. So I give that as a reference at the beginning and then the productions, you know, because you always want to see, you know, how much it costs, is it more expensive here or not, okay. So there's a couple of cities. And the funny thing is at the end, we end up to Taipei in the hotel that I knew 20 years ago. <laughs> because, uh, uh, you know, I find nothing better than the thing that I have in my head at the 20 years before. I want the people to travel. I want to the people to do like, whoa, where are we going? <laughs> and just to follow the ride. It's a, it's a, it's a ride. It's, if you if you accept the ride, if you refuse and say, oh, okay, hold on, is it possible that this or this, then you're you're, you know, on the side of the film. But if you if you let yourself go in a ride and then you you want to enjoy it you're going to have a pretty amazing ride.